Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. It is the third Sunday of Easter as we continue in the season of Easter and celebrating that our Lord is indeed risen. We may rise for our opening hymn, number 594. Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, 
confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and my prayer. O men, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Honor in your own hearts, on your beds, and be silent. Offer right sacrifices. And, and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Who will show us some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart. Than you have when you are praying and wine and bound. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, may be well in safety. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The first reading for the third Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 3. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, 
Why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 John 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you to you, Christ. Together we confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, 
and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. God's grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our sermon this morning comes from the first reading, from Acts. In the Easter season, uh, instead of an Old Testament reading for the first reading, during the season of Easter, the church historically hears from the book of Acts. 
because we read um, the effect that Easter had on the early church and how the early church uh, proclaimed the word of God in its, in its beginning. So we kind of, during the Easter season, we kind of go back, we go back in time to that, uh, those first chapters of Acts to see what the church did with this new message of the resurrection of Christ. And what we find in our reading from Acts 3 is right after Peter and John heal a man, and um, the man ran and clung to Peter and John, and everybody saw this miracle, and and so that's the the setting for Acts chapter 3, why it begins kind of in a strange way. It says, while he clung to Peter and John, uh, that was the man who was just healed. He was so thankful that he was healed and uh, that they did that miracle to him, uh, and everybody was amazed. Uh, and also, uh, our gospel reading, uh, the sermon is going to be based on this particular verse. Uh, this is after Jesus was raised from the dead, Luke 24. And there in verse 45 uh, and 46, 40, 45 and following, Um, Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And that's kind of the the part we're really going to focus on this morning, and here is Jesus telling his disciples, Well, now what? What do we do? Because it would seem natural in our gospel reading as Jesus, last week we heard Jesus appeared to the disciples, Thomas wasn't there. He appeared to them flesh and blood, and then now again we hear Jesus appears to them again, flesh and blood, and they're surprised. And so it might be natural that the disciples wonder, is this going to happen all the time now? When God's people gather together, is Jesus just going to appear flesh and blood And so this is the reason why Jesus teaches them what he does. He is saying, essentially, no, I'm not going to appear to you in flesh and blood as I am right here, right now, but I am going to be with you. And in fact, I'm going to be with you in an even more intimate and close way through my word and sacrament. Because Jesus tells them, now you are to preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in my name. That this is how Jesus is present with us, through his word and sacrament. A new presence, a better presence, because Christianity is, it's, it's not about a set of moral laws. Christianity is not about a certain type of government. It's, it's not about a program. Christianity is about a man. A man who, well, claimed to be God and then showed himself to be God. Christianity is about a man who was raised from the dead and he tells us he still comes to be with us. That is what Christianity is. And that should be the concern of every Christian. What is Christianity? Is Jesus really with us? Does he appear to be with us? How do we know that we are being given what what we need? When Jesus says, preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins, are we receiving what Peter says in in our reading from Acts? Times of refreshing. Now, in the last couple of generations, um, food packaging has become pretty important. It's become rather complex. It used to be about the only thing we cared about on food packaging was, well, the expiration date. Even then, if you're like me, when you look at the the date stamped on the milk jug, it's more of a suggestion rather than a hard and fast rule. Pop the cap, smell it, eh, close enough. But now, if you've noticed, with more focus on diet, especially with various illnesses floating around everywhere and people caring about their health, now food packaging and ingredients, nutritional facts, Let's become like a dictionary on the back of food. We read more on the pack of a piece of bubble gum, more than our ancestors read in a month. Calories, sugar, 
trans fats, regular fats, country of origin, organic, free range, the list goes on. We've become very conscious about what we put in our bodies. Your life depends on it. Well, today, Jesus tells us and the church and his disciples what should be on the wrapper for every sermon. Jesus tells us what we should be concerned about, not in food for our bodies, but are we receiving, like Peter said, times of refreshment? Are we being refreshed when we hear the word of God? When we hear a sermon, what is it that should be in every sermon? Because that's what Jesus says his disciples, what he commands them to do today. He tells them, preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in my name. I'm not going to be with you in flesh and blood, but I'm going to be with you in this way. Preaching repentance and forgiveness of sins. It should be the theme for every sermon, every Bible study, every time somebody opens the scriptures to teach, it's what Jesus says to do. In verse 45 through verse 47 in our gospel reading, you notice Jesus did two things. He opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures. And by scriptures, he's, that means the Old Testament. And then he did, and then he did something else. He instructed them on what the church is to do now that he's risen from the dead. Preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in my name. It's that simple. No strings attached, no funny stories, no anecdotal tales told by a charismatic preacher, no super engaging movie clips to tell you what the gospel is like. No, Jesus makes it pretty easy for us preachers. Preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in my name. Oh, but Jesus, people's diet now is so much different. Their attention spans are so much shorter now. In fact, Jesus, three people have probably already begun to let their minds wander, and I haven't even told one joke. Jesus, our society, we need fillers, entertaining stories. We need additional ingredients. Jesus, there's so many distractions. How can your word work with computers, laptops, iPhones, iWatches, and good old-fashioned noticing that the person sitting in front of you has mismatched socks? Jesus, just preaching repentance and forgiveness of sins in your name, it sounds... Well, it sounds like reading a nutritional label doesn't sound all that fun. But here, Jesus isn't just giving us the bare essentials. Jesus is reminding the disciples and us that man does not live on bread alone, but every word which comes from the mouth of God. Jesus isn't teaching his disciples just to give little crumbs, but he is giving them what is essential to life as a Christian, the Word of God. And Jesus proves it. He reminds them. Even Jesus does this. When he comes to them in person, he does this very thing. He says, everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. Even the Old Testament, it was about Jesus. The whole point of the Old Testament was Jesus, essential to your eternal life, the one ingredient you cannot live without. Even before he was born, Jesus was the sole ingredient, the one most important part of a well-balanced diet, Jesus, the Son of God. There is no, need, no other need. No secondary dietary need. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Without me, you can do nothing. Yet, how easy it is to starve ourselves. How easy it is to not care about the nutritional value of what we put in our ears. We're so willing to chase the fillers in life. 
But just imagine, Jesus could have told his disciples anything he wanted. I mean, put yourself in their shoes. Jesus has risen from the dead. You see that he is true God. He has defeated everything. He has all wisdom, knowledge, and everything. What would you have asked him for? Jesus could have given them the winning lottery numbers. He could tell them the next best stock investment. He could tell them how to avoid getting sick, how to cure cancer, how to raise perfect children. But this is more important than all of that. Jesus says, preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in my name. More important than curing cancer, more valuable than any diet. This is not only for the disciples, but every person who opens the scriptures. Listen for what Jesus tells the disciples to preach, repentance and forgiveness of sins. If you don't hear repentance, you aren't being shown your sins. Then the preacher, he isn't feeding you. If the forgiveness of sins becomes just some added on secondary agreement, uh, ingredient, well, you're not being fed. And my, how we look to find sustenance on the things of this world. We worship the created rather than, rather than the creator. We want the trans fats. We crave the artificial sweeteners. I'm talking spiritually. We want what money can buy. We chase the approval of people at the expense of remaining faithful to Christ. Just as easy as it is convincing yourself to go ahead and have another piece of dessert. Or, yeah, might as well just finish all this Easter candy while I'm sitting here. If you think about it, it doesn't really take much to convince us to sin. You don't have to try and gossip. You don't have to try and assume the worst about people. Nor do we have to tell ourselves to skip church and Sunday school. Yes, it's like we're addicted to sin. We have a taste for it, and, and we hunger for it. Yet, after we've had our fill, after we've lost our temper, after we've sinned, after we've maybe wish we hadn't spoken so harshly to our children. We just wish we were better examples of the Christian life. And after we've gorged ourselves on sin, it doesn't feel so good. The times of refreshing that we hear about in our first reading, that's really what we need. Like that afternoon eating too much Easter candy, nothing good comes from sin. In fact, sin, it's a starvation of righteousness. Too often we lack discernment. Too often we don't know how to listen to God's word or we completely forget what Jesus instructs us on today. To listen for repentance, to receive the forgiveness of sins. Repentance and forgiveness of sins, it's so often last on the list so often, instead of analyzing or listening to a sermon or a Bible study, our first concern is, did it make me feel good? Jesus mentions nothing of the sort. Repentance and forgiveness of sins. Listen for repentance, the law of God's word. For the forgiveness of sins, the gospel. Jesus Christ was crucified for your sins, raised for your justification. Look at Peter's sermon in our reading from Acts. He shows us that he learned the lesson from the gospel reading. Peter goes straight for the meat and potatoes, no candy, no fluff. Why? Because Peter knows his audience, his hearers, they're real sinners. Peter preaches repentance. He says, you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. How often it is that instead of choosing Jesus, we choose sin. He, he, he goes on further. Peter says, and you killed 
the author of life. Talk about preaching repentance. But Peter, don't you know that according to all the latest church growth gurus and, and fancy preachers, you don't want to tell people about their sins. You don't want to upset them. Don't you know they might get sad? They might not come back? But Peter, he learned his lesson from our gospel reading. Peter knew what the people needed, and he knows what we need. He knew that the paralytic needed more than just a healing. He needed more than just working legs. Everyone needed repentance and forgiveness of sins, and you do too. The very one that they sinned against was doing the healing. If you notice that, they, they all ran to Peter and they, wanted, they tried to grab them and start and begin to worship them. And the, the disciples, they said, no, it's not us who's doing this. It is the very one who you handed over to death, Jesus. He is still present. He is still doing the healing. But more important than healing in your physical body is the healing for your sins, the forgiveness of sins. Repent, therefore, Peter says. Turn back that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. There it is, the main ingredient. Peter points out to them that the presence of the Lord is with them, that through the word and the forgiveness of sins, Jesus Christ is not gone. He's a man raised from the dead and is present with his people. First, he was on the cross, where there he was starved. There he was starved of what he deserved. He deserved to be rescued. But the Father left him there so that he wouldn't leave you. Jesus never fed himself on fluff nor sin. He never strayed. Yet he took your sins upon himself. He died on the cross for you. He suffered the consequences of you indulging in your sin. Your hate, your anger, your impatience, Jesus takes it all. He ate it up, took it into himself, and now the sins of the world are gone. Yes, the news is that great. Times of refreshing. Who of us wouldn't yearn for this? In a world that seems to have gone mad, times of refreshing sounds pretty good. Times of refreshing, we are told, from the presence of the Lord. Is the Lord with us? Is he, as he says, in the word and sacrament to give us times of refreshment? Indeed, he is. And whoever says that the Lord's Supper or baptism is just symbolic, they miss the point of the refreshment of Christ. That Christ comes to be with us to forgive us through his word, to feed us himself in the sacrament of the altar. How refreshing is that? All the fake food we eat, all the things we chase in life, money, power, retirement portfolio, perfect children, position on sports teams that might get us a scholarship. Jesus doesn't leave us with those things because he knows in the end, they're empty. Jesus appears and is with us through preaching of repentance and forgiveness of sins to take away your failures, to take away your sins, to take away your death, to refresh you, to point you again and again to your baptism, to speak to you the words of life, the very words of God, not just bread and wine alone, but his body and blood to eat and drink. How's that for an ingredients list? The body and blood of Jesus. The medicine of immortality. Yet, instead of Jesus being among us to eat something to prove he's real, he invites you to eat him, to partake of his very body and blood and live by faith. For that is righteousness. You are forgiven, restored, fed, and nourished. 
Not so you can run back and indulge yourself in sin, but to heal you, to refresh you. So, don't eat so much junk food. I'm talking about spiritual food. As you fight against that fifth donut, fight against sin. As you force yourself to eat that salad or celery, make God's Word part of a regular diet, Bible study. Make that a priority. The Holy Spirit feeds you through repentance and forgiveness of sins. It's not terribly difficult. Pay attention to what you put in your ears. What do you feed your faith with? Unlike a nutritional facts label, the scriptures, well, they're always clear. Through faith in Jesus, you'll live forever. You will never die. The presence of Christ brings you times of refreshment. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please rise. prayers today, we continue to remember those listed on page 16. So let us pray for the whole church in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have not kept your Son from us, that he has come by his birth, death, and resurrection, and yet comes to be among us that through word and sacrament we receive times of refreshment. Help us to hunger and thirst for the right things in this life, that we would repent of our sins and find refreshment in the forgiveness of those very sins, that we rejoice in eternal life won for us by Christ and his resurrection from the dead. Grant us to be students of your word. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your presence we find fullness of joy. And by your right hand, Christ Jesus, you win and deliver us to us peace forevermore. In the midst of this world's sin and sorrow, give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and grant us confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you've made us your children by baptism and you gather us together in your holy church to feed us. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance and forgiveness of sins, that Jesus' name may be heard among us, and that we would support the carrying of this from here to all nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Give peace, O Lord, to our homes, and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives, parents and children. Assure all those who live alone that they too are your children, upheld by your right hand. Be with all those who are lonely and suffer from depression and anxiety. Send your Holy Spirit, O Lord, to destroy the darkness and the works of the devil. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders, especially our president, governor, all of those who serve us in our government, our judges and magistrates, those who represent us, our police and firefighters, preserve order and decency in this fallen world by their hands, restrain evil and deception, and keep lawlessness at bay, that we may practice righteousness while awaiting the return of Christ. Be with the members of our military, that as they are separated from their families, they too would be strengthened in their mission 
and their families at home encouraged by their service. Lord, in your mercy. Father, as your son's wounds brought gladness and peace to the troubled disciples, give your presence and comfort to those troubled in our midst. We pray especially for Jackson, Randy, Bob, Ruth, Misty and Harper, Lorraine, Paul, Paul, Jean, Art, and those we remember silently to ourselves. That you, O oh Lord, would be with those who suffer, especially those who suffer alone. We ask you also, O oh Lord, to comfort those who weep, that with the blessed joy of the Easter message, your Holy Spirit may comfort them, so that indeed we may mourn, but not as those who have no hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son's crucifixion has blotted out all sin. Send us now refreshment by his bodily presence in the sacrament of the altar. Make us fit partakers in repentance and the forgiveness of our sins. Grant us to seek out, to rejoice, and to receive this sacrament and to give thanks for all your good. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Lord, all these things and whatever else you know that we need. Grant us all these things for the sake of him who died, rose again, and now lives and reigns to all eternity. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue on page 10. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Be Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. 
Please rise. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.